solve each equation. In this first equation, you'll notice that there are denominators in three out of the four terms. And that makes life a little difficult, and it would be great if we could get rid of these denominators. So the first thing I want to do is find an LCD. And in this case, the LCD is 12. That's because with this 12, I can divide it 12 evenly by 2, I can divide 12 evenly by 4, and I can divide 12 evenly by 3. And this is the smallest number that I can divide evenly by 2, 4, and 3. That's why we call it the least common denominator. Uh, so what we do with this least common denominator is we multiply each term by 12. And when you do this, the entire reason for multiplying by the LCD is to get rid of the denominator. So I will come down here and rewrite a new equation. And in this equation down here, you can see there are no more fractions. And I'll explain where everything here came from. Uh, in the original equation, the 12 and the 2 divide evenly, and that leaves you with a 6 left over. And I'm leaving that 6 outside of the parentheses. That is where this 6 comes from. And on the inside of this parentheses, there's still an x. So that x is here. And we can do this similarly for all these other examples here. 12 divided by 4 leaves me with a 3. So that 3 is here. And the 1 is left over on the inside. Equals 12 divided by 3 gives me a 4. So that 4 is here. On the inside, we're left with an x. So that's here. And then this last one, 12 doesn't cancel with anything. Uh, so that is still on the outside of this set of parentheses, and 5 is on the inside. So now I can simplify this to be 6x minus 3 equals 4x minus 60. I'm sorry, plus 60. Uh, from here, all I need to do is get all of the x's on the left-hand side. Now I'm left with a positive number of x's, and I'm going to add 3 to both sides to get all of the constants on the right. And when you simplify all of this down, you will get 2x equals 63. The last step here is to divide both sides by 2 to uh, isolate the x, and so x will be 63 over 2. In this next example, um, this is 6 over x plus 1 plus 6x over x plus 1 equals x. Now, similarly to this last example, uh, we will need to find an LCD for this equation. Luckily, the common denominator, or the denominator is the same for both. So we already know that the LCD is x plus 1. Now before I go through and do all of the multiplying by LCD like I did in this first example, this equation is different from this equation. This equation is a rational equation. And it's rational, we call it rational, because there are variables in the denominator. In this example over here, this is not a rational equation, this is a linear equation. Uh, because there are no variables in the denominator. We just have x to the first power, x to the first power. So what happens is when we introduce variables into the denominator of an equation, we end up having restricted values. And we set this in place. Um, the, we say x cannot equal negative 1. This is our restricted value, x equals negative 1. Because when you substitute negative 1 in for x here and here, you get a divide by 0 situation. That can't happen. It is impossible. Nobody knows how to divide by 0. Uh, so we have to pay special attention to our final answer, whatever we get, that if it equals negative 1, that is a restricted value, and that answer will not work. 
So let's go through and do this uh, multiplication by the LCD. So we have this times x plus 1, this times x plus 1. And I'm going to put these x plus 1s in parentheses. Uh, and x times x plus 1. Uh, and again, we're multiplying by the LCD to get rid of the denominator. So this, denom uh, this will cancel with this denominator. This will cancel with this denominator. And in this last term on the other side, there's nothing to cancel. So the new equation will look something like this. 6x, uh, sorry, 6 plus 6x equals x plus 1 times x. And now, um, whether you like it or not, we have to distribute this and create a quadratic equation. So this will be 6 plus 6x equals x squared plus x. And my inclination is to subtract 6 from both sides and subtract 6x from both sides. Uh, that way, uh, we can still have a positive x squared when we're trying to do this, and hopefully we'll be able to factor. Um, but when we cancel these things out, or reduce that to 0 and reduce that to 0, and combine these terms on the other side, it'll look something like this. From here, you can just uh, factor this right side to get 0 equals x minus 6, x plus 1. Uh, and then you can set each one of these equal to 0 and get x equals 6 and x equals negative 1. The very last step is to check. Do either of these numbers match up with our, oh, yeah, negative 1 matches up with our restricted value. This answer, x equals negative 1, is no good. But this answer, x equals 6, is definitely a good answer. It does not match the restricted value um, that we found earlier. Solve the following radical equations. In this first example over here on the left, we have the square root of x plus 2 minus 1 equals 4. Now the first thing that you need to do when trying to solve a radical equation is to get isolate the radical. I'm going to draw a box around that. It turns out that we have something extra here, this minus 1. We need to push that over to the other side before we can do uh, the magic of squaring both sides. So when you do this, the adding 1 to both sides will achieve our goal here. So we have the square root of x plus 2 equals 5. Uh, the next step here is that we want to get this x out of the square root. Right now it's trapped inside the square root. We want it out of the square root. And in the easiest way to do that is to square both sides. Now that we have the square root isolated, we can square both sides. Uh, the square root and the square will cancel. And that leaves us with an x plus 2 equals 5 squared is 25. And the very last thing we need to do now that we have the x out of the square root, we can now manipulate everything in this equation, is to subtract 2 from both sides to isolate the x and get an answer x equals 23. And again, you can just really quick double check. You can say in here 23, right, substitute your answer back into the original equation for x. So 23 plus 2 minus 1. So does that equal 4? Well, 23 plus 2 is the square root of 25 minus 1 equals 4. We're still checking to see if this is true. The square root of 25 is 5 minus 1 equals 4. Check that is true. This is a good answer. For this next example, uh, again, we want to make sure that we have the square root isolated, and we do. There's nothing on the same side of the equation outside of this box. So we can go right into squaring this thing. I'm going to rewrite this equation again with a square, like this. Uh, 
And again, as what happened in this example over here, when you square square root, those will cancel. So on the left side, we'll be left with a 3x plus 1 equals um, the right side. We will actually have to FOIL this out. We cannot just distribute this to the square, to the x and to the 3. When you square something, that means you have to say x minus 3. You multiply something by itself. So you'll have to do foiling here to get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So now we are in quadratic situation. So in order to solve this, we need to have an equal zero. And in order to keep the x squared positive, I'm going to push all of these terms on the right, uh, sorry, on the left, over to the right side. So this 3x will cancel with the minus 3x, this 1 will cancel with the negative 1, and we'll end up with an equation that looks like this. Uh, from here, again, we can use uh, the factoring to factor this into uh, x minus 8, x minus 1 equals 0. And then when you set each of these factors equal to 0 and solve for x, uh, you will see that x equals 8 and x equals 1. Now, with the square root equations like I did over here, it's very important that you check in fact, it's very important that you check any answer, uh, but really important to do it for the square root equation. So I'm going to, just like I did in this example, substitute my answer in for x. I did it over here. So I'm going to substitute 8 in for every x I see here. And, what, and see if both sides are the same. See if I get a true statement. So the square root of 3 times 8 plus 1... I want it to be equal to 8 minus 3. So 3 times 8 is 24. 24 plus 1 is 25. So I know this is the square root of 25 equals 8 minus 3 is just 5. And I know that the square root of 25 equals 5. Check. Um, I'm going to circle this answer. I know that one works. And then for the other solution, x equals 1, I'm going to substitute 1 in for x in this original equation up here. Uh, so I will have the square root of 3 times 1 plus 1 equals 1 minus 3. So inside the square root, I've got 3 times 1 is 3, 3 plus 1 is 4. So I know this is the square root of 4, and 1 minus 3 is negative 2. The square root of 4 is positive 2. This is false. So I'm going to come over here and cross out my x equals 1. The only answer we have that works is x equals 8. Simplify each of the following. In order to simplify these four square roots, these four radicals, uh, it's easiest to make sure you have a list of perfect square numbers like this. These numbers represent the perfect squares of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way down to 13. Uh, and I go all the way to 13 just for good measure. Um, so in fact, I really want to do these bottom two first, and we'll come back up here and do these second. Uh, so how I work these is I first note what number is inside the radical, and it's 45. So I come over here and look, between what two numbers does 45 land? And it looks like it's going to land right in between here, in between 36 and 49. So my 45 is right in there. From here, what I do is I want to start at 36. I want to start at the next number above 45. So 36, I want to check, does... 40, is 45 divisible by 36? Do I get a whole number? And the answer here is no. What I'm looking for is the biggest number that I can divide into 45. So I'm going to start at 36. 36 doesn't work. 
does 45 over 25 give me a whole number? No, does 45 uh, over 16 give me a whole number? Nope. Uh, does 45 over 9 give me a whole number? Yeah, that gives me 5. So I know I can break down, and that's the biggest number that we, the biggest number in this list that we can divide 45 by evenly. So over here, I'm going to rewrite 45 as 9 times 5, the square root of 9 times 5. And the reason why we have these numbers here is because you can take the square root of them easily. So when you look over here at this 9, you can easily take the square root of 9. And when you take the square root of 9, you'll get 3. And since we can't do anything with this 5, we just leave it inside the square root. So there is your example of simplification squared of 45. So over here in blue, I'm going to do the same thing with 72. I know 72 is between these two numbers. And I can go through and say, well, 64, uh, 72 divided by 64 does not give me a whole number. 72 divided by 49 does not give me a whole number, but 72 divided by 36 does. So when you do that, we can say 72 is 36 times 2. So we break this apart into two different numbers, one that we can easily find the square root of and one that we cannot. So we take the square root of the one that we can take the square root of. So this gives me a 6. Oops. Uh, and then the square root of 2, this 2, we can't do anything with it, stays inside the square root. So with these other two examples up here, you do similar process, breaking it apart if you need to. Uh, but then we have these negatives. And really, in the real world, we don't deal with the negative square roots very much. But in math, we have to, we have to work with them. And what ends up happening is the negative comes out of the square root automatically. We don't have to worry about this list of numbers over here when we see a negative. The negative comes out of the square root, and that gives us an i, the imaginary number. And then we have the square root of 10 left over. So then once you get the i out, you have to use 10 over here in this list 10 is right here, but we cannot simplify the square root of 10. 10 divided by 9 is not a whole number. 10 divided by 4 is not a whole number. We can't split this one apart like we did these down here. So it turns out that this is the answer. Uh, for this other example here, again, the negative comes out front of the radical as an i and we're left with a square root of 81 afterward. And it turns out that the square root of 81 is in fact nine. So we can rewrite this as nine I. And there's your answer for that example. Solve using the quadratic formula. Here we have the quadratic equation, two X squared minus four X plus five equals zero. And in order to solve this using the quadratic formula, it might be helpful to see what that is. So here it is. Uh, what we need to do in order to successfully use the quadratic formula is to first identify A, B, and C. So A is the coefficient of the x squared term. B is the coefficient of the x's, whoops. Um, and C is the constant. So I'm going to put boxes around these. So a is 2, b is negative 4, and c is 5. And so what I'm going to do now is just start filling in blanks over here, the b, a, and c. Uh, so I know x will equal negative, negative 4, since b is negative 4, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. You know what, that looks like a lot of work to do inside over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and I'm going to figure out b squared minus 4ac off to the side. 
and I know b is negative 4, so that's going to get squared, minus 4, a is 2, and c is 5. So now that I'm over here figuring out b squared minus 4ac, whatever number I get will be inside this radical, and it'll just be one number. Uh, so, negative 4 squared is positive 16 minus uh, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40. So, 16 minus 40 is negative 24. So, this number is the same thing as writing b squared minus 4ac. So, I can just put that right back inside the radical. So it's the square root of negative 24 all over 2 times a. So 2 times a is 2 times 2 in this particular case. So that is 4. All right. So now we can start simplifying things a little bit. This is x equals negative and negative 4 is positive 4 plus or minus. Uh, see the previous example for the simplification of this? But the simplification, because there's a negative, there will be an i, and this also separates um, with the square root uh, idea. It becomes 2i squared of 6 over 4. Now the last part of this is, can this fraction be simplified any bit? And to test that, you'll have to check to see if the constant that starts, the constant outside of the radical, and the constant in the denominator can all be divided by the same thing. So 4, 2, and 2, I'm sorry, 4, 2, and 4 are all divisible by 2. So I want to divide this 4 by 2, I want to divide this 2 by 2, and I want to divide this 4 by 2. And you'll either be able to divide all of these numbers by the same numbers. In this case, we can divide them all by two or nothing. So it's either you divide all of them and simplify it or you divide none of them and it's already as simple as it gets. I'll show you in the next uh, step here. So this is two plus or minus i square root of six all over two. Uh, so this is your answer, but I want to show you very quickly that this cannot be simplified anymore. And I'm going to do that by putting a 1 in here. We don't write this 1, but there's a 1 in front of that i. And if you look, I said it has to be the number, the constant, uh, before the plus or minus, the constant outside of the square root, and the constant in the denominator. Now, it looks like you can divide 2, you can divide both of these 2's by 2. But you have to divide 2, 2, and this 1 by the same number. So if you divide this by 2 and this by 2, you also have to divide 1 by 2. And that doesn't leave us with anything very nice here uh, in the denominator. That'll leave us with a 1 half. We like whole numbers. So this, we can't divide anymore. This is our final answer.